what's going on everyone double D once again and in this video we're gonna be installing the Bradley performance rear shock so I just got it in the mail a while back but uh for those that see my previous videos before I got the cogent rear shock on my other t-dub I apologize my garage is a mess right now it's about to get a little bit messier so but this one is the Bradley performance rear shock so I picked it up for right about 300 bucks so First order of business is we have to take off the rear tire. I found it that's the easiest to take your shock off and the seat has to come off too. In order to take the seat off, there's plenty of videos online, but I'll just show you real quick, just highlight what you gotta do. So these two bolts right here, gotta come out, they're just 10 millimeter. All right, now that two bolts are out, just pop the seat off, slide it back and out. So what's next is you got, what I found to be helpful is you have to take off your rear tire. You got this cotter pin, so should be a puller out right here. That should be a 22 millimeter. Let me find out real quick. 22. So on the left side, it is a 19 mil. So before you forget to, we got to take off your brake assembly here. Just back off the little wing nut. Just so I don't lose all this hardware, I'm just going to hastily reconnect it on there by a few turns. Alright, I'm going to slide the whole wheel back now. There we go. In order to take off your shock, you have to take off this top bolt here. So that's why I took the seat off. And underneath here, see how much space you have now for the rear tire out? So... Underneath you just have to take off this little pin on the bottom. So basically take that cotter pin out on the right and you take that top bolt off obviously and the start shimmying out your shock. You can use an open wrench on both, but uh my preference is I'm gonna use a socket. Honestly, you don't have to take that all the way off. As long as it can just pop up, pop up a little bit, we can get a socket on there. It should be good. Pop this guy back on. Now we'll start loosening things up here. Should be able to get her by hand now. Okay, this guy, you could use a punch, but uh, I just have that hand strength, I guess. On this side too, you have the little wire bundle there, so just be careful. You have to just pull up on it just a little bit. Just so you can clear that out of there. Okay, there's a top popped out there. I just have it all the way down right now. So, anyways, let's take out that cotter pin now. So, there she is. I may have had a couple adult beverages by now. Try to bend the ends down. Eep, there's kind of one. Kind of spin that around too. Doesn't have to be straight up and down whatever floats your boat there we go you got a washer right here so I'm gonna pop that off boink now this guy kind of just get the weight off of it I'm gonna bring it up try to get the weight off. I might have to use a punch too I'm thinking I might have to use a punch here yeah or a rubber mallet I'm gonna use that top bowl as a punch actually let's do that I suppose if you took off your passenger pegs, it would make it a little easier too, but uh, I got a nice little window here. Boink, there we are. Pull this guy back out. That's actually, actually the top bolt makes a pretty good punch for this, not gonna lie. Hey, okay, let's wrestle this shock out of here. Boink, there we go. Feed her out the back. Original 1987 shock about 40 years old <laughs> now we're gonna put in the Bradley performance shock or off-road shock Sweet. all right so we got to reuse the original bolts all right nothing too crazy really good looking shock by the way oh it came with a bunch of different like little shim style things or little washers so so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of shimmy it 
through here. I'll get I'll get a shot of the top too, so. I'm gonna put it came with six shims, these little plastic shims or washer thingies. I'm gonna put those in place first without trying to drop them. Okay. And then um uh, pop this guy up. All right, I'm gonna have to pick up on my swing arm just a tad. Give it some two hunts, it takes three, okay. So it comes with six of these plastic, I'm gonna call them shims, could be called washers. Six of these little shims. So three on each side, pretty self-explanatory on what to do now. It's gotta line her up. All right, for me, I gotta pick up on this little wire bundle, it's kinda slider on through there all right now that keep pushing sweet that's through now let's get that washer and nut started for those confused about the orientation too of what you're looking at um zoom out here so you're looking forward but uh yep bolt goes in this way that's how i took it out super easy to put in as of now so now i gotta get that bottom little pin which shouldn't be too hard. Just kind of have to line her up with the hole and go. So, yes, I'm wearing my bolt rattle out. I have a bunch of other bolts. And yes, I'm also wearing <laughs> my, my levers broke. I also have replacement parts I need to put on tonight. But anyways, continue on with this. Let's line up the hole, slide the pin in. Ideally, you'd want to grease the pin, but uh, I don't know where my grease gun went. <laughs> but uh, I just grease on three in one oil. Better than nothing, I guess. Let's get that washer on and then get a new cotter key. I found a whole bin of brand new cotter pins of different assortments and sizes, so. And the wink that didn't feel too good on my finger. Okay, cool. There we go. All right, I ended up finding the Torx online. The top here, it is 36 foot pounds, so. 36, all right, 36 foot pounds. And uh, that's Merkin, and uh, everywhere else it's 50 Newton meters, so. Bam, break, all right. And okay, now, I'm gonna tighten down this bolt to the gas tank, it's a 10 mil, so. Bring out my handy dandy T handle here, I like this little tool, it's fun using. So, got a little, not everything's installed. There's this little jam nut up here, so I'm gonna tighten this guy down now. I'm just gonna put that right in there, right there for now. I'll adjust it later on. If I if it needs adjusting, I'll adjust it. If it feels fine, I'll keep it as is. But I'm just gonna put this little jam nut where it's at right now, snugger down. I don't know what size it is exactly, but I'm just gonna use uh, adjustable here, just kind of snug it up. Okay. All right, we putting on the tire now. So you wanna, there's this little groove on over here and there's a little slot for it too. You wanna make sure it lines up with that little slot. That's why I'm actually had this all the way on and I realized I didn't have it in the slot. Simple mistake, but uh, easy to take the seine on and off, so it's whatever. Uh, got a nice fire going tonight. Got the wood stove going. Music's playing when I'm not recording, so it's, sometimes it's nice being out in the garage, kind of chilling, peaceful. Might have to use my mallet, maybe, maybe not. All right, I guess we had her. Oh, yeah, let's not use my hand as a mallet, okay. Let's go ahead and get this snail adjuster on. Make sure it matches the other side too. So, put the castle nut on. Start tightening her down by hand here. Well, leave it slightly loose because you still have to tighten up the chain. That's kind of too tight. Back off. So, we're just a dash under four. Put a dash under four now on this side. Because when you tighten it up, when you tighten the nut up too, it kind of tightens it up a little bit, up a little more. So, that's about ideal right there. 
That's pretty good. A little castle nut too. You kind of want to have it oriented where the hole is available on, on the bolt so you can slide a cotter pin through. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and reconnect my rear brake here. So pop the wing nut back off, slide the little spacer thingy out. And this will go in the center here and have her slide back. Bam, and then we nut. Yeah. That's about good right there, I'm saying. You just want a little bit of play where, where it's not dragging, but it's still like you can lock up the rear wheel. Cool. There we go, let's go take her out in the trail. Well, first things first, I gotta get a bolt right there. <laughs> All right, I just got the Bradley Performance aftermarket off-road shock installed looks pretty nice in there but um go ahead get the seat back on but um really really easy to do so if it's it looks intimidating but it's super easy so if i if this video helped you out at all definitely leave a like for sure it helps out the algorithm gets my video out there so other T-dubbers can see but um anyways uh I got a little some other little things to wrap up like <laughs> if you haven't noticed I broke my lever off I actually got another perch I'm about to put on tonight so but uh, anyways uh and I got a bolt I put on my muffler that rattled out so anyways uh super easy to do um very satisfied with I still need to test the shock out, so I'm going to take it out this weekend for sure. Honestly, with the shock, I feel like I have better control on that dune because that tire is more planted, and instead of, like, bottoming out when I hit the bottom of the dune it just kind of springs me forward it just kind of shifts direction or shifts my momentum where I just, just kind of springs me forward how it as kind of pushes the front end up the hill like I said before I also have the cogent rear shock that one's more than double of this shock but um I will do a little comparison video once that other my other t-dub gets up and running I got a little bit of work I got to do on that thing I just, and I also don't have time too, so that's one of the... <laughs> I should have hammered down one more on the throttle, like the nose kind of dipped there in midair. There's nothing like hammering down on a T-dub out here, especially an original 87 T-dub. Come on, let's start. <laughs> now that shit that dune. Yeah, the shock compresses at the bottom, then it, when it releases, it kind of shoots me forward just a little bit. It gives me a little bit of momentum. It gets me rolling up that hill. Plus the condition of the sand's like really good right now too. That helps out a lot. But uh, <laughs> man, it, feel, it feels good. Um, once my other T-dub, I know I keep saying that, once my other T-dub gets up and running, I want to take it out here or just to, you know, like Walker Valley or something. We got a bunch of technical stuff and see how the two rear shocks compare. D dub! Whoa! It feels so good to be out here on a T dub. You have no idea. On my side of the screen, things haven't been so good lately. But, uh, oh man, it just feels good to be out here. going 35 it sounds like I'm hauling <laughs> bro back shock feels so planted now it's crazy now I gotta get a uh, change out the front springs for sure now it's like 
feels dis feels disproportionate. Wow, every everything just feels great. Now I got to change out the springs on the forks. It's really easy to do. I actually have a video. I'm gonna hit this whoop section. I'm standing. Hit the whoops. Oh! Oh! I lost my fender. That was all. That was all the front end. I'm so, okay. Now the front end's a little. Front end's a little wonked out now. Oh. I hit so hard that. Like, my exhaust is leaking. <laughs> that's how that's how hard I hit. <laughs> it's a it's a stiff shock. <laughs> what if I just blew it up already, bro? Okay, that's gas. I was like, please don't blow the shock. I just <laughs> I just got the thing. Woo, that felt good. Other than the stock front end. Everything else felt really good. <laughs> okay, we've got to hit that hard. Oh yeah, back end feels planted. Feels really good. Yeah, back end feels planted. Not my front end so... Not my front end feels squirrely. 